The sun is shining, the pads and pulls are out. Yeah, it's summertime. But why in all this glorious weather is the nation staying indoors glued to their TV screen? If you've heard the words muggy, pied off, cracking on over the last couple of weeks, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Love Island is back. And it's one of this season's big talking points. It's got the highest rating views on ITV2. It's even won a BAFTA. And if you've got no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. Over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to give you all the know that you need to know about the biggest TV programme that young people are watching, talking about and Snapchatting. And I'm also going to give you some helpful points about how you can use it as an effective tool. So, what is Love Island? Well, it's a British reality dating show with some key ingredients to get the nation hooked. Take a bunch of absolutely gorgeous singletons, throw them into a luxury villa in Mallorca that only has double beds, add in a wisecracking comedian, and give plenty of twists and turns to keep the nation hooked. But do you know what? It is an actual competition. The competition is, the aim of the game is to couple up with somebody to win the nation's affections and to ultimately win the 50k prize money. Maybe love might be a byproduct along the way. So why is it so popular? We asked one of our GB leaders, Zoe, to share why young people are watching it. So lots of young people, including Girls Brigade members, are watching a show called Love Island. And in my view, I think there are two main reasons for this. The first one is because you can't get away from it. People are having conversations about this show everywhere you go. It's happening in school playgrounds, in workplaces, at bus stops. You name a place, people will be talking about Love Island. So if you're not watching it and you're not involved in those conversations, that can be very isolating and it can make it feel like a very exclusive club that you're not part of. I think the other reason that people are watching it, frankly, is because we're all a bit nosy and we like to know what's going on in other people's lives and shows like Love Island give us a really good insight into people's lives without us having to give anything away. You don't have to um, talk about yourself or say anything about your own life before you then find out about these other people and really quite intimate details about their lives. And I think it's really important that we recognise that about shows like Love Island and that we understand that there are messages coming through that are perhaps maybe not as overt as we think they are. And I think one of the key things that we need to help our young people understand is the subliminal messaging they may be getting from shows like this. So what's good and what's not so good about Love Island? There's no doubt that the guys and girls on Love Island are stunningly beautiful and they're using every opportunity to parade around in their little bikinis. But what's the message that's sent to girls? We know that there are so many unrealistic images of women's bodies in the media and Love Island just feeds into that. To be considered beautiful, you have to be skinny but with large breasts. You need to be waxed, you need to be plucked and you need to be tanned unrealistic and unattainable one of the hottest girls in the house is actually rumored to have 25 k's worth of plastic surgery she is 24 years old so the wider message that girls are getting your values and what you look like and whether you're considered a sex object unfortunately two-thirds of girls of the british public feel that they're that they're not enough and we need to change that number two the whole aim of the game it's the couple up in Love Island. So very much when the lights go out, we see a lot of action under the sheets and it can kind of verge on soft porn. But the message there is relationships are disposable. There's nothing special about having sex. So that whole idea that we become consumers of sexual intimacy, that's the norm that young people are seeing. That you just move on from a relationship when you get bored or they're not meeting your needs. There's no need for commitment or loyalty. So what's good about Love Island? I have to be honest, I find it very hard to redeem the TV program, but because it's such a national talking point, it has raised issues like um, mental health and suicide, additional needs, and even about emotional manipulation in a relationship. And anything that spotlights those issues and helps us talk about it is uh, a positive thing. But the question is that so many young people are watching this night on, night in, six nights a week actually, 
and they're consuming all these messages, how do we help them critically analyze the messages that they're, they're receiving? It may be a reality TV show, but it is carefully constructed. Love Island has a very innovative team of producers who are using certain games to initiate certain conversations to make and break relationships. So how can we help young people be passive, uh, not passive consumers, but actually critical consumers of Love Island too. So number one, use the programme to ask good questions. If you hear a young person in your family or in your GB group or in your church talking about Love Island, ask them a question about what do you think makes a healthy relationship? What do you think about what's happening on the show? What do you think about the girls' bodies? Do you think that's realistic? Also, if you're a GB leader, you have fantastic GB resources that will help you do this. Inspire and engage, we look at relationships, we look at sex, we look at friendships. So how about planning ahead for next summer when Love Island will be back in June to do the relationship element of the badge then. Secondly, you can equip yourself. We've also got fantastic volumized resources, including uh, resources and videos and programs for you to use with girls and with leaders so that you can really get clued in in topics like dating, sex, mental health, and self-esteem. So why don't you use that at your next leadership team meeting? And thirdly, we have a tremendously different message to share as Girls Brigade Ministries. Look at GB's COCO initiative, a special video called Worth the Wait. And that's the message we do want to share with young people, that sex, tremendous gift from God, and it is worth the wait. So why don't you show that video online or share it as a reflection in your GB group this week. Thank you so much for all that you're doing to turn up the volume of hope for girls. As they would say in Love Island, let's get cracking.